Namaskar. First of all, I want to congratulate the Times Group on hosting this very topical and important ET Net Zero Summit. Let me start by wishing all of you very warm greetings from the bottom of my heart. When I say warm greetings, I don't mean it in the physical sense. We are all well aware that the last two decades have been the warmest in the history of our planet. The global average temperatures have gone up by one degree Celsius or more compared with the pre-industrial era. One degree may not sound like a lot, but the implications are far too obvious and deadly. Rainfall patterns have become erratic, landslides have become more common, and sea levels are rising. Climate change is no longer science fiction, but its effects are visible everywhere. Unless we wake up now and do our bits, governments, corporates, and individuals, it may be too late. We have our task cut out. To halt climate change, humans need to cut carbon emissions drastically so that we reach our net zero targets. In other words, any emissions of greenhouse gases, especially CO2, must be balanced by absorbing an equivalent amount from the atmosphere. The idea is to meet the 1.5 degrees Celsius global warming target set as per the Paris Agreement. And for this to become a reality, carbon emissions should reach net zero around 2050. A growing number of countries around the world have been pledging to achieve net zero emissions by this deadline. The challenge in front of all the countries is to ensure robust economic growth while enabling a smooth transition to a decarbonized world. In my view, this collective effort has to be at five levels, individual, family, company, nation, and governments around the world have to act together. India is home to the Vedanta philosophy, which says, everything starts from the self. Satyam vada, dharmam chara, which means tell the truth and behave as if you create precedence. No matter how much you preach, it never works. But when you act, people believe you. India is a 5,000 year old civilization and it has been in our ancient ethos to worship Mother Nature and live in harmony with her. It is clear that what we respect, we use but don't abuse. When India came up with the concept of zero, how can net zero be alien to us? Conservation and recycling is an integral part of Indian DNA from time immemorial. My grandfather used a wooden pencil till it became smaller than the smallest finger. We have all worn passed down clothes of our elder siblings and cousins as we grew up in joint families. And we have all donated our used books to libraries and computers to underprivileged kids. As far as families are concerned, I have seen many families already adopting hybrid cars and encouraging kids to go by bus or carpool. I have encouraged my teenage kids to use the school bus. And in COVID times now, they use carpool with their friends if the school is open. Many families have changed their fooding habits to vegan from non-vegetarian, as vegetarian food has a lower carbon footprint. Even in global climate change conferences, we have seen that vegan food is served as a symbol of sustainability. These are very encouraging trends. Needless to say, as corporate leaders, we must play our part too. So the crucial question is how important is net zero to our companies? At Dalmya Bharat, we push ourselves to reach new heights in performance and growth, but we also take extreme care 
to ensure that we run a sustainable business that leaves a better planet for our future generations. I am glad to let you know that we were one of the earliest to join this movement. In 2018, we were the first cement company in the world to commit that we would be carbon negative by 2040. Over the last decade, we were able to reduce our carbon footprint by 22% and yet grow three times in capacity while doubling our profitability. We have boosted our circular economy agenda by recycling industrial, municipal and agricultural waste into our cement production process. Over the next three years, we are committing a capex of 2000 crores towards waste heat recovery, energy efficiency and material efficiency. We have also proposed to allocate up to 10% of our operating cash flow towards innovation and green energy fund to develop and adopt innovative technologies that combat climate change. Our humble efforts have enabled us to become an organization with one of the lowest carbon footprints globally in the cement industry and we are committed to becoming carbon negative by 2040. For this, we are closely watching the developments in the green hydrogen, carbon capture and energy storage technologies globally. At Dalmia, we believe clean and green is profitable and sustainable and climate change is one of the biggest business opportunities of our time. As Blackstone CEO Larry Fink recently said, the next 1000 unicorns will not come by making a search engine or a new media company. They will come from companies that produce green cement, green steel, green hydrogen and green agriculture. As far as our nation is concerned, our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi has pledged during the recent COP26 conference in Glasgow that India would achieve net zero emissions by 2070. India's action plan includes taking non-fuel energy capacity to 500 gigawatts to meet 50% of energy requirements from renewable energy, to reduce carbon footprints by a billion tons and to bring down our economy's carbon intensity below 45% all by 2030. Estimates by the CEEW Center for Energy Finance say that India needs at least USD 10 trillion investment to achieve net zero emission by 2070. This is a huge business opportunity. While governments recognize the threat posed by climate change, the developing countries have been of the view that it is the developed nations that are responsible for the greenhouse gas emissions. Richer countries have failed to meet the commitment they made in 2009 to allocate $100 billion a year by 2020 to address the needs of the developing countries. To achieve the target of net zero, it is reasonable that the countries that gained the maximum from uncontrolled development pay for the measures to reduce emissions in places that are still in dire need of development. If done smartly, this is not, not a dole or a subsidy. It is a humongous business opportunity. Net zero by 2050 needs a revolution in everything we produce and a revolution in everything we consume. Fulfilling the basic needs of humanity like food, fuel and construction material, all of this has to be reinvented. All this needs large investments and large innovation. So the rich countries can invest this money smartly and gain from it. People ask me, is there a plan B? I say, no, there is no plan B as there is no planet B. We have only one beautiful earth that is our home. Let us all join hands to turn an inconvenient truth of today to an incredible reality of tomorrow. Thank you.